today's video we're going to take a look at what GW previewed last night in their battle report stream. Um, it was the Death Guard versus the Demons and they previewed a bunch of really cool data sheets. Uh, obviously unfortunately no GSC data sheets. We're going to have to wait for later in the month to get those. But they did show a lot of previews on the missions and the secondaries that the players were using which was really awesome. But the one thing they showed kind of in full is the Gambit deck and how that works. So I thought it'd be awesome to make a video and explain how, you know, picking gamut works, how you score points from the gamuts, and like, I know there's a lot of negativity and negative chatter surrounding this, especially in the competitive community. So I wanted to make a video showing that, you know, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. And these things really are gambits, like they're called. They're gonna be extremely, extremely tough to pull off. And you're gonna know when your opponent's doing it. And if you let them do it, uh, it's kind of on you in my opinion. But let's look at how the gambit that works and how you're going to decide if you're going to do a gambit and which ones you even get to pick from. So either player, doesn't matter if you're winning or losing, can choose to do a gambit. And it's a series of things that you need to complete, which we'll go over each one separately after this, to get 30 victory points is what all of them award you basically. And right off the bat, I think people see that 30 victory point tag and are like, oh my god, like, it's going to swing huge games, like, it's crazy. How can they add something into the game that's going to be a 30 point swing and call it competitive, right? Uh, well, the first secret is Warhammer's never been super balanced or competitive, but you, you'll know that if you played in any tournaments. But the second part is, it's really not as bad as that, you know, sticker shock make it seem when you see that 30 points. So you start with three gambits that are the same that everyone has access to and one card that says basically I'm not going to do a gambit, I want to keep playing the game as normal. And at the end of the third battle round, both players shuffle the three gambits that they could do, randomly discard one, so you're never going to be able to build your list and plan, even play your game planning to accomplish a specific gambit because that might be their 33% chance that you get rid of the one that you were playing for. So you're not gonna know until you discard that random one and how you're gonna complete the gambit. So the end of the third battle round, say you do, you're, you're behind and you pick to use the gambit card and you and your opponent show it. Your opponent decides to play the game as normal and you decide to throw down the gambit. So what this means is in turns, battle rounds four and five, you can no longer score the primary, which um, based off the mission that we saw last night looks to be like 15 points a turn, so that's 30 points. Um, but you can score the gambit at the end of your fifth battle round, depending on which one you took. So let's take a look at the actual gambits themselves and see how difficult they are to do, because just based off that information, you might be thinking like, why would I not do that? Um, like if they're easier to get than the primary and I'm still scoring my secondary, I'll, I'll give it a go, right? Uh, but I think we'll see pretty quickly that, that they're tough and these aren't gonna be an every game situation or even most game situation in my opinion. And before we hop in and talk about the specific gambits themselves, I just wanna remind everybody that I am sponsored by Frontline Gaming. And if you use the link in the description below, it'll take you over to their web store where you'll get 15% off of GW's MSRP. And uh, you can see at the top there, it's free shipping on orders of over 100 bucks. And I get a small kickback to the channel every time you use that link down there and purchase through Frontline Gaming. I uh, definitely appreciate it. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you'd like to see the content keep coming, definitely do that if you need some models. They got combat patrols over there. I was just looking at the Chaos Demons one. I definitely do not need to start a new army, so I'm not going to buy it. But these combat patrol boxes are really, really cool and interesting stuff. 
So let's get back on to look at the gambits and see what I think about them. So the first gambit we're going to take a look at is delaying tactics. The whole battle was a ruse, and it was really just to tie up your enemy's forces so you can do some cool stuff in the you know war somewhere else. Very GSC-like. I like it. Um, and then you get to the wall of text of the actual rules, uh, which I'm just going to paraphrase. You can read this all yourself, but I'm going to kind of paraphrase of how it works, basically. So you're looking for a target number of dice rolls that you're going to make at the end of your fifth turn. So that target number is going to be either half of the number of enemy units that you're within engage engagement range of, or if it's less than that, four. So if you're in engagement range with 10 enemy units, it'll be five. Uh, less than that, it'll be four. So let's just say it's four, because I mean, the other thing is probably not gonna happen, right? So at the end of your fifth turn, you're gonna roll a d6 for each enemy unit that's within engagement range of one or more of your units from your army. Uh, and you get to add one to that. You're looking for a four plus. I don't know why they didn't put that first. You're gonna add one to that if the enemy unit's battle shocked, and you're gonna subtract one if one or more of units in that engagement are battle shocked. If it are, I like it. Good job, GW. Um, if, if they're battle shocked, you're gonna do it on. If you're battle shocked, you're doing it on fives. If your enemy's battle shocked, you're doing it on threes. Nobody's battle shocked, you're doing it on fours. So you're gonna have to roll four separate four plus on the d6, and you're able to get 30 victory points from this. Um, Obviously not very likely. Maybe if you have a way to do super battle shock to someone, like some of the factions previews that we've seen, four three ups that now starts to look not terrible. But then you gotta think it's at the end of your fifth turn and you need to end engagement range with your opponent's units who you're, you're losing if you've decided to do a gambit. So they're gonna get to hit you back with the close combat units that you pick that you've charged into so you might not have enough units engaged at the end to do this so this is definitely a tough one um, if you have a horde or if your opponent has a horde like guardsmen left on the table and you can charge a, a ton of guard units with you know tougher units like space marines I would say this is definitely a go for the gambit situation but then again your opponent knows you're doing this at the end of the third battle round so they're going to be able to do things to maybe make it so you can only charge one or two of their units. And then you're going to have to get a bunch of your units engaged with them. Um, this is definitely a tough one. I think you're not going to be happy if you're going to be trying to do it, but it's not, not impossible, right? So let's take a look at the second gambit. Emergency evacuation is uh, very, very similar to the last one we just looked at, except for in order to determine that number you're going to need to roll for, you're going to take half the number of units in your army on the battlefield at the end of the battle round. Rounding up, uh, including units that are embarked in transports, and if it is less than four, you're going to increase that number to four, the number you're looking for. And then at the end of the fifth turn, you're going to roll 1d6 for each unit from your army that's wholly within six of the center of the battlefield, subtracting one if they're battle shocked. And on a four plus, you're going to get marked for evacuation. Um, so if you get that many times to a minimum of four, you'll get the 30 points for the gambit. This one, if you can mob the center of the table, might not be so bad. But again, remember, your opponent knows you're going to try to do this, and you're not scoring primary, so you're kind of abandoning the objectives to do this, I guess. But your opponent can also do the same to keep you out of the center of the table. And if you're going... to try and mob the center like this, I mean, and you're kind of losing, you, you better have tough units, I guess, to go on the center of the table. So maybe like Death Guard, who have a little higher toughness than normal, could, could pull this off, or some of the tougher factions out there, maybe reanimating Necrons. Um, this will be an interesting one to see, also because getting that many units wholly within six of the center, that's gonna be a crowded spot. Uh, I don't know how many of the primary objective placements will have an objective in the center. I know the mission we saw last night had one on there. And if that's the case, you can you can bet that your opponent's going to take up some of that real estate. So again, this one's not super easy to do, but in dire situations, you might be able to pull it off. And then I left my favorite one for last, the Orbital Strike Coordinates. Uh, this is the one that they actually previewed originally when they were doing the previews of the missions. 
Um, so at the end of your fifth turn, if one or more of your units from your army are not battle shocked, wholly within nine uh, corner of the battlefield, you can roll two d six. Uh, so let's stop right there and pause and just point out that you have to have at least one unit within the corner of the battlefield, or you can't even roll for this gambit. So if your opponent knows you're doing it, they can, you know, box you out of the corners. They can stop you from getting your corners through shooting because usually there's not terrain back there in a lot of maps. So you have to have a unit back there. Now maybe you've got bottom of turn and it's the end of the fifth battle round and they don't have a chance to shoot you as you move on and that'll kind of benefit you, but they, they might get the chance to shoot you off. So you're going to add one to the result of your roll for every corner you do have a unit wholly within nine of, uh, excluding units that are battle shocked or engagement range. Um, so I didn't even think about that. They can just charge you and not even worry about killing the unit to stop this. And if the final result of your 2d6 is 12 or more, you're going to score 30 points. Um, so, yeah, you could do this by rolling a 9 if you're in all four corners of the table. Um, and maybe GSC could pull this off with their, their little blip shenanigans, but remember that those blip units don't show up until your opponent's next command phase. So if you are going bottom of turn and it's turn five, those units aren't coming back in this game. So you're not gonna get the benefit of that. Uh, you do have a one CP strat to beef trick within threes to get, you know, maybe you can get your two back corners in your deployment zone and deep strike within three with the strat in your opponents and get this on a, a lower roll. But again, this is tough. Um, this, this definitely is the one that is going to cause the most feels bads because someone is going to lose because your opponent had one unit by a corner and they rolled an 11 and scored 30 points. But having said that, that's not anything different than we've seen in 40k in a long, long time. Just because that happens doesn't really mean that the dice lost you the game. Like there's definitely things you can do to stop this from happening, like just engaging your opponent's units, blocking out those corners once you know that this is happening. Especially since you know that your opponent can't score a primary anymore, and if you're already up, just make sure they don't score their secondaries, and you're probably good. Now, am I ready to say that these gambits are the most balanced thing in the world, and I think that they're going to be amazing for competitive 40k? Uh, no, but I am excited to see how they shape out the play of the mission, and it does add another layer of decision making that's going to win or lose players' games. And I think that can only be a good thing. They don't have too much, like, you know, swinginess to them. Other than if, if someone does do them, it's going to feel bad, I think. But I think maybe we'll just have to learn to accept that and know that this is a part of the game. And just with anything in the past editions and newer rules that have come out, players will learn how to play around it and play for this. It'll be tough to build your list for this, but you can build your list to stop things, stop them from happening, I think, easier than to accomplish them. You're gonna need like fast moving screening units to stop a lot of these. Um, and it's looking like on the addition as a whole, screening is gonna be a thing with deep striking happening more, more often and more effectively, it looks like. So I'm excited to get some games in of 10th edition, which will be very, very soon here, and to beat somebody using one of these gamuts. One person in particular, he knows who I'm, I'm talking about. Um, so let me know what you think about the gambits. If you absolutely hate them, absolutely love them, let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the uh, last few videos, definitely like and subscribe. I absolutely appreciate it. And good luck in your 10th edition games out there. It won't be long until we're all playing the new edition.